Uh, hello everyone, welcome to our presentation. We are from group six. I am Sramanti Dotto and uh, my other group members are Mahir Amrar and Ali Al uh, so Now, um, this is our presentation uh, topic, design of heat sink for electronic devices using console multiphysics. Actually, for our final project, we have designed a heat sink by using console multiphysics. Here are the outlines of our today's presentation. At first, we will talk about heat sink, then the working principle of heat sink. After that, we would like to talk about console multiphysics as we have used console multiphysics in our design purpose. And we used the heat transfer module of console. So before introducing the console multiphysics, we would like to talk about the heat transfer module of console. Then the heat transfer theory the, and some equations that we have used in our uh, process. After we will in detail we'll talk about the design procedure of heat sink in console multiphysics. And finally, we'll talk about uh, the results of our proposed model. Now, the main thing is what is heat sink? Though the term heat sink probably isn't one most people think of when they hear the word computer but it should be very popular. The importance of heat sink in an electronic device is a lot. Actually, without heat sink, modern computers couldn't run at the speeds they do. Just as you cool down with a cold bottle of Gatorade after a high impact workout, heat sink cools down your computer's processor after it runs multiple programs at once. And without a quality heat sink, your computer processor is at risk of overheating, which, is, which could uh, destroy your entire system, costing you hundreds, even thousands of uh, dollars. So we can understand the importance of um, a heat sink. But what exactly is a heat sink? A heat sink is an electronic device made of a good thermal conducting material. It is attached to an electronic device to dissipate the unwanted heat. And it used to cool the circuit components by dissipating the excess heat to prevent overheating, premature failure, and improve the reliability and performance of the components. Now, how does a heat sink work? We need to know the working principle of a heat sink. Basically, to understand the working principle of a heat sink, you don't need to be very taking. Just think uh, of a heat sink like a car radiator. The same way a car radiator draws heat away from your car's engine, a heat sink draws heat from your computer's central processing unit. The heat sink has a, a thermal conductor that carries heat away from the CPU into fins that provides a large surface area for the heat to dissipate throughout the rest of the computer, thus cooling both the heat sink and the processor. Here I have um, attached a diagram, uh, attached a picture which have depicted the working principle of a heat sink. In conclusion, we can summarize that uh, for heat sink, thermal conduction occurs whenever two objects at different temperatures are in contact. Then this involves the collisions between the first molecules of the hotter object with the slow moving molecules of the colder object. This leads to the energy transfer from the hot object to the cooler object. Now, the console multiphysics, as um, I mentioned in my previous slide, we have used console multiphysics, the version 5.5 uh, for our design purpose. Um, basically, engineers and scientists use the console multiphysics software to simulate design says, devices and processes in all field of engineering, manufacturing and scientific research. Console multiphysics modeling in a single simulation process, the, um, uh, this process is based on a finite element analysis. 
and practical physics explaining where various features from heat transfer to optics it has lots of modules um, and we will use the heat transfer module the calculation is relatively fast it can link uh, to various uh, software such as autocad solidworks microsoft excel matlab um, actually we can um, import some data from uh, microsoft excel or even we can um, design any device by using solidworks autocad and then we can insert that uh, design says to uh, uh, directly into console. It has material library. From the material library, we can select the uh, material of the proposed devices. We, it has also model library and it, it has multi plot features and results representations. Now, the heat transfer module of console. Actually, console has lots of modules, uh, and here we will use only the heat transfer module. The heat transfer module is used by product engineers, designers, developers, and scientists who used detailed geometric models to study the influence of heating and cooling in devices and processes and processes. It contains modeling tools for the simulation of all mechanisms of heat transfer, including conduction, convection, and radiation. Simulations can be run for transient and steady conditions in one-dimensional, two-dimensional, and three-dimensional systems. The high level of detail provided by these simulations allows for the optimization of design and operational conditions in devices and processes influenced by heat transfer. This is the actually main equation that we will use in our design purpose. Uh, here, the temperature T and pressure P are dependent variables. Rho is the density, Cp is the specific heat capacity at constant pressure, T is the absolute pressure, U is the velocity vector, Q is the heat flux by conduction, Qr is the heat flux by radiation, P is the pressure, tau is the viscous stress. Uh, stress uh, tensor Q contains heat sources other than uh, viscous dissipation. Alpha B is the coefficient of thermal expansion, and we can explain alpha as alpha equals to 1 by rho delta rho by delta T. Now, the main design procedures that we have followed in our project. If we open the uh, console multi physics, this will be the first page. And here we can see three different different tabs. First one is model wizard, then blank model, and then application wizard. We will select the model wizard. The model wizard actually helps us to build a model by choosing the space dimension, physics interfaces, and study we want to use. So after selecting the model wizard, there will be three steps to start uh, to design our model. First one will be select space dimension, then select physics, and then select study. So here is the select space dimension phase. Here we can see there are different dimension, three dimension, two dimension, one dimension, and zero dimension. After selecting any dimension, um, uh, specifically in our design, we have used three dimensional model. That's why we will select 3D and then we will select done after selecting done we will go to the next page which is select physics so here oh, we can see the different different modules of console uh, like acdc uh, chemical spaces transport electrochemistry fluid flow heat transfer optics plasma radio frequency semiconductor structural mechanics mathematics so from this Tab, we will select heat transfer. Then again, we will select done. After that, we will go to the next press, which is select study. From the select study page, we can see there are two different options. One is stationary and the other is time dependent. In our case, we will use stationary. So after selecting stationary, we will uh, select done and then we will go to the main page to design our model. 
which is the geometric base. So after going to the geometric base, I need to define the parameters that will be used in my model. So uh, for channel length, we have used seven centimeter. Um, uh, three centimeter was our channel width. Our uh, channel height was 1.5 centimeter. The tip size was 1.5 centimeter. Mean inlet velocity was five centimeter per second. Inlet temperature was 20 degrees Celsius or 293.15 Kelvin. And the total power dissipated by the device was one watt. I know it's very small, but uh, we just uh, try to design a heat sink, that's it. So here is the total geometry of our proposed model. And um, after select, after completing the uh, modeling, we have to select the materials that we have used for our model. So here uh, from, we can see um, from the application builder, there is material. Uh, so from the material browser, we can select any kind of material. Uh, Console Multiphysics has a huge range of material um, browser. So uh, for the we as uh, our intention was to design an aluminum based heat sink so that's why we have used uh, aluminum 303h18 uh, and uh, this uh, this one actually domain two for this domain we have selected matter uh, aluminum as the material and then uh, for my domain one we have select air for domain three we have select silica gas and for boundary 34 we have selected thermal gas so here we can see the setting tab of material so um, in this section uh, we can select the domain actually after selecting any specific area and then we'll select the plus button then this domain will be selected this is how we selected our domain for specific materials and here we can see the material contents here all the properties console will by default take the uh, electrical and other properties from their material browser so after selecting the material, we need to add mesh. Now, we need to know why we'll use mesh in console or in our model. Actually, the mesh used for a model geometry plays an instrumental role in how the model is solved and it determines factors such as how the geometry is divided, with what shape or element type of geometry is divided, the size, density, and number of elements in the geometry, and the element quality. So actually mesh size directly affect the computation of a problem, including how long it takes a model to solve the amount of memory required to compute a problem, how the solution is interpolated between nodes and the accuracy of the solution. So the more small will be the mesh size, the more time it will take to solve uh, the problem, so to solve the model and the result will be more precise. In our case, we have used extra cores as the mesh element size. So after selecting the mesh, our model was like that. Then we, uh, we are ready to uh, run our model. Here is the result of our model. So from the uh, graph, we can see the hard work behind the heat sink visible in the plot is a sign of convective cooling effects. And the maximum temperature reached at the heat sink base is about 380 Kelvin. So that's how we designed our model. Thank you so much. And thank you.